It's going to start driving gold and silver prices a lot higher, a lot faster, and we're going to start entering, I think, the final phase of this explosion, implosion, explosion, boom thing in the monetary system, of course. Get ready for an eye-opening analysis as Rafi Farber delves into the current financial landscape. In this video, he discusses the high stakes facing the Federal Reserve and how their decisions could shape the future. With expectations hanging in the balance, the Fed's every move carries weight, and Rafi Farber explains why. Stay tuned to discover how these developments may impact the soaring gold and silver markets and what it all means for the ongoing monetary system upheaval. Join us as we navigate the intriguing terrain of economic shifts and potential explosions in the financial world. Hey guys, Raf here from the End Game Investor, and time is growing short. We are heading into the final price inflationary phase of this monetary system, I think, as judged by the new wave in price inflation, consumer price inflation. I know inflation is money printing, but I'm talking about consumer prices here. And this is being echoed in a change of heart by a whole bunch of economists that were surveyed by FT. I think yesterday or two days ago, they are changing their minds. They believe that the Fed will not pause its interest rate hikes. It will rather continue down the interest rate hiking road because they see a new wave of consumer prices rising. We're going to compare this with the 1970s. Could we be at that inflection point where higher interest rates go from causing consumer prices to fall by smashing demand and the marginal debtors to where they encourage prices to rise because they choke off supply faster than they choke off even more demand. I think we are at that point and mainstream Keynesian economists are starting to see it also. And I think this is great for gold, even in the short term, because it means that if the Fed does raise rates coming this week at their FOMC meeting, it will show a sign of desperation when they everyone was expecting them to stop raising rates. And now they're raising rates, which means they fear inflation, which could drive the gold market a little bit nutty, maybe. I mean, I'm not a short-term trader. I'm not a short-term timer. But this quick change in sentiment could reverse the gold market a lot higher and break through those highs at 2080 pretty quickly. Will it definitely happen? No, nothing is definite. But on the other hand, if they don't raise rates while economists are expecting it, then expectations for a more consumer price inflation rise and gold goes up anyway. So I think we're in a point, we're at a pivot point, we're at an inflection point where no matter what the Fed does, gold goes higher. This is not advice, this is just my feeling. And second, the reverse repos, the extra dollar reserve tank is now plummeting very quickly, which should mean that the money supply is rising as money goes out of the reverse repo facility, which is outside of the money system, outside of the banking system and goes back into it. But we are not seeing a rise in money supply, probably because these reverse repos are being taken out of that facility and put into the banking system to plug, this is my assumption, to plug holes in the balance sheet of big banks that are getting defaulted on by loans, whether they be mortgages or auto loans or whatever they might be. If we're seeing defaults and money move back into the system from reverse repos at the same time, we should see a plummeting reverse repo supply, which we are seeing, and a static money supply, which we are seeing. At this rate, the reverse repo tank gets emptied in about five and a half months, which is January, February. But I think it, if there are defaults, it will accelerate and that tank will empty even sooner. And once that tank is empty, there are no more spare dollars to use and you end up in the next financial crisis. So we are months away from that at most, I think. And this is not advice, these are just my entertaining calculations and ask a professional who knows a lot, met less, I mean, more than me, more than me. Everybody knows more than me. I know very little. So let's look at these little charts and we're going to go through some little inflections. So first of all, here we have the 1970s, the two inflationary waves, the two inflationary trends. It came in two major waves. There was one in the early 1970s, but it was a much more minor. That was just when Nixon closed the gold window in 1971. So here you have the first wave, which we go from about, let's say 2.5%. And the caveat or my disclaimer on these numbers are that I know that the CPI is crap. I know it's crap. I'm not saying that it's accurate, but as crappy as it is, it does show trends. And the trends are what I am interested in here. We know that there was severe price inflation from 1972 around to 1970. 
1974, just before 1975. And we know that there was severe price inflation from about 1977 to 1980, as we see on this chart. Exactly what the numbers were, doesn't matter. I'm talking about the trends. So the CPI is accurate in that it does show that when price inflation goes up, when consumer prices go up, the CPI goes up. And that's all I care about. So from 1972 to about 1974 for 30 months, 1975 maybe, we head up here for a period of 30 months. And then we go down between 24 and 40 months, depending whether you want to see this as a little blip or not. So let's just say 24 months, and then we're static for about here. And then we head up for another 23 months. And this is when gold tops at 872 and silver tops at $50. This was the point where the dollar almost completely imploded and we lost, we almost lost the fiat dollar, the so-called fiat dollar, which is really still a gold derivative, but you know, that's my thing. And now we're going to go into the 2020 trends. Could we be repeating this? And you know, history never repeats, but it rhymes and that's a cliche and it's hackneyed. I'm sorry. Anyway, the 2020 trends we saw at the peak of the deflationary panic, right? Did the CPI go negative? No, it was still positive. Consumer prices were still rising year over year, even at the March 2020 complete lockdown crazy panic. So we have here for 25 months, consumer prices start rising from about March 2020 until, what is this, April 2022. And then we go down for about 12 months and now we are headed higher. Now this could be a blip or it could be the start of a new trend. And the reason why, one of the reasons why I think it is the start of a new trend is that the Keynesian economists are starting to chime in that they also believe that price inflation is headed back higher. And for that, we will go to the FT in next month. It's going to start driving gold and silver prices a lot higher, a lot faster. And we're going to start entering, I think, the final phase of this explosion, implosion, explosion, boom thing in the monetary system, of course. So let's go to the Atlanta Fed, right? We see here the Atlanta Fed. I'm going to move my face because it's probably in the way. The Atlanta Fed uh, shows the sticky CPI versus the flexible CPI. The flexible CPI is the one that's got a lot more wobbly, right? So we see the flexible CPI, meaning prices that change more often. This is like, it's sort of like the core versus the, the whatever is not the core, but it's not exactly that. It's pretty close. So the flexible CPI, which is mostly like food and energy and volatile stuff, it peaked out at 19.7 price inflationary rates in March 2022 and then starts really falling. And now we're at a point where it is falling absolutely year over year, minus 2.6%. But over the last two months, which we've seen in the CPI measures, we have gone back up. The last thing I want to show you is the reverse repo spare dollar tank. This was all the money that was printed in 2020, 2021 that did not make it into the banking system. And now it is going into the banking system. Then why isn't the money supply increasing? Well, it isn't. You look at a weekly chart of the money supply, which I won't go into here. I've shown it many times, but trust me, it's static. It is not expanding. So what is happening to all this reverse repo money? Where, where is it going? Well, I think it's going into plugging defaults. Perhaps loans uh, are defaulting in big banks and those big banks that have all this money in their reverse repo facility, they're using it to plug a hole in their balance sheet, uh, which is so we would see a static money supply with a falling reverse repo facility. So here's the reverse repo facility and something happened yesterday that hasn't happened in two years. First of all, this is the reverse repo facility. We see that it is going down uh, pretty sharply since June 2023, which is when the debt ceiling fiasco was solved for, uh, you know, in a miraculous save by our glorious politicians who saved the U.S. from default and they should be awarded the um, so we see it's going down here, and you see here at the right and right here, we see like a big swoop down here. We're going to zoom in on this in a second. Uh, so we're down to 1.4 trillion. We, we were at about 2.254 trillion over here. So we're down about 850 billion. I forgot the exact number, but if you do the math at this rate, starting from June 2023, we should be out of this tank. This tank should be empty by about February, March 2024, which is about five months from now. And if the defaults are what are draining this money out of reverse repos, then we're going to run out of spare dollars in around that time. And that is when we should see the final financial crisis, the final implosion, which will lead to the final money printing round, which will lead to the final explosion in the end of the current monetary system since 1971. As we conclude this insightful discussion with Rafi Farber, it's clear that the financial landscape is evolving rapidly. The Federal Reserve's decisions are poised to send shockwaves through the markets and the precious metals arena is on the brink of significant movements. Keep a close eye on upcoming CPI data and stay tuned to our channel for the latest updates on this unfolding monetary system saga.
thank you for joining us on this journey, and we look forward to bringing you more in-depth analysis in the future. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe for the latest insights on the world of finance.